Final Fight was the very first beat-em-up game released for the Super Nintendo, and is still fun to play over 30 years later. It's also quite challenging, featuring surprisingly smart enemies that attack in groups and look for opportunities to stab you in the back. Of course, before it was on the Super Nintendo, Final Fight was one of the most successful arcade games of 1989. Arcade technology had made huge advances in the late 80s, Pac-Man debuted in 1980, and only nine short years later, we had this. A cutting-edge game like Final Fight looked absolutely mind-blowing surrounded by the older machines in an arcade. You may be surprised to find out that Final Fight actually started as a sequel to Street Fighter. The original Street Fighter wasn't a blockbuster hit like its future sequel that would ignite the fighting game craze, but it was successful enough that the arcade sales team at developer Capcom asked for a sequel. Producer Yoshiiki Okamoto was inspired by Double Dragon 2 The Revenge and decided the Street Fighter sequel he was working on could ditch the one-on-one -on -one structure and be more of a beat-em-up. In charge of planning and designing this new game was the soon-to-be legendary team of Akira Nishitani and Akira Yashuda. In early designs, two of the playable characters were going to be Ken and Ryu from Street Fighter, but they were later changed to original characters Cody and Guy. The third character was a new design, the muscle-bound Mike Hager. To explain how he fit in, the game's opening cutscene describes Mike as a former Street Fighter, and that bit of text made it into the final game. The working title was Street Fighter 89 as the team demoed it at trade shows. Arcade operators liked the game, but recommended that they change the title. This new game felt nothing like the original Street Fighter. They retitled it Final Fight and developed a new story unrelated to Street Fighter. Mike Hager is the mayor of a fictitious metropolis called Metro City. Although it looks a lot like New York, they even have the Statue of Liberty. Hager has been tough on organized crime, so the Bad Gear Gang, an evil syndicate spearheaded by a corrupt businessman named Belger, kidnap Hager's daughter Jessica in an effort to make him back off. It's too bad for them that Mayor Mike is a former pro wrestler, and with the help of Jessica's boyfriend Cody and mysterious ninja Guy, these three will stop at nothing to rescue Jessica and eliminate the Mad Gear Gang once and for all. The arcade game released towards the end of 1989, and to say it was a success would be putting it mildly. It was the highest grossing arcade cabinet in Japan in 1990, and was the second highest in 1991. In the United States, it was a huge hit as well, topping the earning charts for arcade games in the months after its release. Of course, it was also popular in Europe and sold over 30,000 cabinets worldwide. Nishitani and Yashuda didn't give up the idea of making a proper sequel to Street Fighter, and just a year later collaborated to create Street Fighter II The World Warrior. Some sounds and visual effects from Final Fight were used in Street Fighter II, and years later, a number of Final Fight characters would be added to the Street Fighter Alpha series, bringing everything full circle. When Nintendo was planning the release of the Super NES, they were hoping to get third-party support from Capcom, and Capcom delivered a port of Final Fight that released shortly after the launch of the system. Being such an early Super Nintendo game, a lot had to be cut to get it all to fit on a cartridge. The number of enemies on screen was drastically reduced, and an entire stage, the industrial area, was removed. Even worse, one of the three playable characters, Guy, was removed and there is no option for two-player co-op. It may sound like the game was massively stripped down, but at the time, players were mostly happy with the quality of the arcade conversion. It may have been missing a lot of features, but it still looks and sounds a lot closer to the actual arcade game than people were used to from a home conversion. At a glance, Final Fight on the Super Nintendo looks a lot like the arcade original. Before the game could be released in North America, even more changes had to be made. Power-up items related to alcohol were removed, 
and some text was altered, but the biggest difference is that the localization team completely changed the look of the only female enemies in the game, changing them into male punks with mohawks. Despite all the changes, the game was a massive hit when it debuted in North America in November of 1991. At this point, there weren't very many games available for the Super Nintendo, and people were excited to bring home one of the hottest arcade games. Worldwide, the game sold over 1.5 million cartridges. For fans that were upset Guy got left out, in June of 1994, a new version of the game debuted called Final Fight Guy. In it, they replaced Cody with Guy. I'm not sure why in 1994 they couldn't release a more complete version with all three characters on the same cartridge, especially considering Final Fight 2, which had come out a year earlier, had three characters to choose from and included the two-player co-op mode that the original is lacking. Final Fight Guy was initially released in North America as a blockbuster video rental exclusive, which is why it's very rare and carries a big price tag on the secondary market. In modern times, players and critics still appreciate Final Fight for its intense action and satisfying sound effects. When IGN released their list of the top 100 Super Nintendo games of all time, they ranked Final Fight at number 100. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges retro games are notorious for. The enemies are merciless and a single hit can remove more than half of your life bar. The bosses are even harder and require tons of punishment before they go down. You only get three continues before it's game over. But what if I told you the best way to survive all five stages without having to use a single life or continue? What if I showed you how to access a secret options menu where you can make the game way easier or even more challenging? And what if I showed you the best way to defeat every boss? Even Belger himself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, We'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. Let's get started. All right, final fight. Before we jump into the game, if you're having trouble with this one, you can access the secret options menu by holding down the L button as you press start at the beginning. It'll bring up this screen where you can check out the different music tracks, and then there's two difficulty settings. I'm not sure why there's two, but if you want to make the game easier, you can set them down to one, and then you can adjust the number of lives you have, and how often you get an extra life, but the default setting is actually the best for that. You can also change it from stereo to mono, and extra joy, all that does is usually you'd have to press B and Y at the same time to do your super move, but you can just press A if you have extra joy activated. We're going to be playing on the default settings, but I did want to show you that trick. Of the two playable characters, I think Hagger is the better choice for beating the game, but let's talk about Cody for a minute. While I like Hagger better overall, Cody has a number of advantages that can make him better in some situations. He's more agile than Hagger and recovers quickly from enemy attacks. He has an array of jump attacks and they're all pretty good. When Cody picks up a knife, he wields it as an awesome weapon, while Hagger just throws it. Enemies frequently drop knives, so this comes up pretty often. The big difference is that Hagger has a much more robust set of throws, and as the game progresses, those get more and more important. If you're playing as Cody, try to move up and down on the screen and group enemies together, then hit them with a flurry of punches. Get close to enemies that are knocked down so that you can hit them as soon as they get up. 
you gotta be Cobra Kai in this game. No mercy. Grab knives when you can. Later in the game, you may need to use your jump kicks to knock down some dangerous dudes. Cody's throws may not be as good as Hagger's, but don't forget that you have them. They can be very useful against some enemy types, like the Bill Bulls. I'm going to be playing through the stages as Hagger, but I will be showing boss strategies for Cody, so if you're a Cody fan, I hope that helps. Alright, let's jump into Stage 1. Stage 1 is the slums, and as it should be, it's a nice, easy first stage to get you acclimated to the game. Pressing the Y button does a punch, and if you rapidly press it, you'll be able to do a 3 punch combo. But with Hagger, your best moves are the grabs. You can do a grab by just walking into an enemy, but you actually have a dedicated grab button in this game. It's button X, which is at the top of the controller. If you just mash on that button while you're moving up and down on the screen, the enemies don't move as well vertically as they do horizontally. You should be able to easily grab enemies and then you can toss them into other ones. Grabs are going to be a very important part of our strategy later in the game, but here in stage 1 your basic attacks should work just fine. Focus on trying to keep the enemies all on the same side of the screen. If you played a game like Double Dragon before, in Double Dragon whenever you grab an enemy and start beating them up, the other enemies will generally leave you alone. That is not how this game works. If you're focused on one enemy, another enemy will try to come up from behind and start punching you, so it's best if you can keep them all on the same side of the screen then you can beat them up in one big group. The enemies over here on the left side are mostly the basic variety, but when we head over here to the right, you want to position yourself up against this box and then turn to the left and start punching. That will put you in a perfect position to hit that G Oriber and his friend, the Wong Hu. These are two big guys that come charging out at you. So that strategy will make them easy. Break open this box, you'll find a random item inside. A knife is not a very good one. You're mostly hoping for some kind of food, or maybe a good weapon like a pipe. But you could actually just get nothing, so at least the knife was an item. And inside this large pile of tires, we found a barbecue. This one usually is food. Barbecue is the best food that you can get, and you can leave it on the ground for as long as you want. As long as you don't walk it off the screen, you'll be able to collect it. So you can wait until your health is low to pick up that barbecue. This 2P is the last enemy, and then it's time for the boss. The first boss is this guy named Thrasher. The easiest way to beat Thrasher is to get right below him and then walk up the screen while mashing the X button and you should be able to easily grab him without being hit. Now when he jumps over here to the side, you cannot damage him while he's sitting down so you want to walk over to the right so you can start fighting the enemies that are going to spawn. But whenever Thrasher jumps in, he'll do an attack and you'll need to either do a well-timed jump kick or the safest thing maybe to just do your super spin move. That will protect you from Thrasher's jump in attack. So your super spin move will keep you safe whenever he jumps in. And he should be down to his last health bar now. Sometimes he'll just stop and laugh at you, which will give you a good opportunity to hit him. But whenever he gets low on health, you should be able to just finish him off with a few punches. But if you have a lot of health remaining, you may want to use some of your super spins. Now let's talk about what to do if you're Cody. If you're playing as Cody, your punches are going to be a lot more effective against this guy than Hagger's are. So don't be afraid to soften him up a little bit before you throw him, or just catch him with your three punch combo. Just like with Hagger, whenever he jumps back into the action, you should try to do your super move so you don't get hit, and that's what happens if you don't do your super move. You'll get kicked by him whenever he comes back into the playing field. You can try throwing some enemies into Thrasher, but I like just trying to move up and down on him and catching him with a few three punch combos. We'll deal with a few more of the enemies that come onto the screen here. And this guy's not too hard, but he can deal you a lot of damage if you're not careful. You don't want to lose any lives here. 
In stage one, we really want to build up a few lives so that we can afford to use some later. As long as you don't get overwhelmed by the extra enemies that are summoned by Thrasher, you should have no problem defeating him with Cody or Hagger. But let's talk about the other way to beat this guy. It's possible to defeat him without him ever jumping over to the side and summoning more enemies. This takes a lot of practice though. The way to do it is you want to get about this distance from the boss, punch him twice and then quickly punch one time to the left and then start punching to the right two times again. So you need to do two punches to the right, one punch to the left, two punches to the right, one punch to the left. You want to get a good rhythm going so you can just focus on the rights and the lefts. It's probably not worth the time and the effort that it took to practice that, but it does look pretty awesome when you get it. Stage 2 is the subway, and you'll notice right away that we're facing some more dangerous enemies. Those guys named Slash, and there's also another variety called Axel, they will try to sneak up on you and get you from behind, and they'll also block your attacks, so your best bet against them is to try to throw them and never turn your back on those guys. Inside this barrel, we found a pipe this time, and a pipe is by far the best weapon you can find. So we do want to grab that, it's going to give us a big advantage, but we'll try to take out some of these enemies that are in the way first. You don't want to get beat up when you're trying to pick up the weapon. A pipe is going to give us a lot more range, and we can keep the enemies pretty far away from us when we have this going, so a pipe is quite awesome if you ever find one, but they're usually random. So what you find in those barrels, it could be a number of different things, and it won't always be a pipe. With the last enemy outside defeated, we'll go inside the subway car, and we can see that there's a couple guys up here wearing overalls that are just sitting there waiting for their stop. Don't give them a chance to get up and start fighting you though. Punch them while they're still sitting down. And there's the super pile driver move. If you grab an enemy and jump and then press down in the Y button, you can execute that. It does a lot of damage, but if you mess it up, you'll probably just let the enemy go, so unless you're willing to put in the practice to learn that move, the regular throws are almost as good. When you see this guy wearing this red outfit, he's a Hollywood and that guy will stab you with knives, so make him a priority target and you'll want to pick him up and throw him. These punk enemies named Sid after Sid Vicious and Billy after Billy Idol, they're kind of hard to punch. They'll start doing cartwheels that will dodge your attacks, but they're not hard to grab, so you'll want to focus on doing grabs whenever you see them. Hollywoods can be thrown into this Andor enemy. An Andor is a lot more powerful than an Andor Junior and does twice as much damage. So you need to be extra careful around those. If that guy gets you down, he'll certainly hit you when you're on the ground and you could lose a life right there. There's just a bunch of low level grunts over here that can be easily taken out in a group with our basic attacks. Remember, overalls are for suckers, suspenders are where it's at. Keep trying to group the enemies on the same side of the screen. If you do get caught between two enemies, don't be afraid to use your super attack by pressing both B and Y at the same time. That'll spin you around and get them off of you. Over here at the end, we can find some weapons or hopefully some food in the barrels. It should not be too difficult to keep all the enemies on the left side of the screen here. They all spawn from the left once you get all the way over here. So keep the enemies at bay. Those punk enemies, the ones named Sid or Billy, you don't want to try to use punches against them because they'll just do cartwheels through the punches. Instead, you want to pick them up and throw them. We have another Andor here. Remember, Andors are kind of like the Abobos of this game. One strategy that does work pretty well against them, especially early on, is to just do a bunch of jump kicks. So if you're struggling fighting the Andors, try the jump kick strategy, but later on in the game, we're going to have to focus on grabs to beat those guys. 
The subway comes to a screeching halt and we have a very short area to go through here. Do not walk to the right without punching that barrel in the upper left corner. You might walk it off the screen and that's one that almost always contains good food for you. So you do not want to miss out on that, especially if you made it through the subway without dying. This area is very short, but you want to get through it with a full life bar if possible because the next boss is actually kind of tough, especially if you haven't fought him before. Try to keep the enemies on the left side here. Slash is one of those guys that will try to sneak up behind you if you give him the opportunity, so just keep him over on the same side with the other enemies and you should be all good. Jake the Snake is the last one left alive, so finish him off and it'll be time to jump into the ring with Katana. This boss is very fast with the swords, so line up with him at the bottom of the screen and then walk up the screen at him while mashing the X button so you can get him in a grab. Then we want to execute the following strategy. You want to grab him and throw him at the top or the bottom of the screen and then move to the opposite side. So if you were at the top, move down to the bottom. If you were at the bottom, move to the top. And you want to be directly in line with him because he's going to do a charge move immediately afterwards. And you want to get behind him as he charges so you can pick him up and throw him again. If you just keep him in that throw loop, you should be able to defeat him. Don't let that guy get out of control. As Cody, we can do a similar grab and throw strategy against this boss, just like we did with Hagger, but we'll also have some luck using our three punch combo. Cody's a good bit faster, so you'll be able to grab the swords that the boss drops, but it is risky. Whenever you're picking up a weapon, it's going to leave you exposed, and you might get beat up by the boss in the process. If you do get a sword, you can take advantage of the enhanced range that it gives you, but whenever this boss gets low on health, I suggest that you just stick to that same grab strategy that we used as Hagger, or try to position yourself slightly above or below the boss and do your three punch combo. The three punch combo seems a bit faster than using the swords anyway. And that's how you beat Katana as Cody. In the original game, his name was Sodom, and I'm not sure if they changed it just because it was a biblical reference or because they didn't want any references to sodomy, but it's Katana now. And you can see here, the classic beat up the car bonus stage from Street Fighter 2 was first seen here in Final Fight. It's a little bit more interesting in Street Fighter 2 because you can use your fighting moves against it, but here in Final Fight, you want to take out the two breakpoints on the left, so there's an upper and lower one. Then grab the pipe as you move over to the right side and finish off the car. Make sure that you completely destroy the car, because getting all those extra points for a perfect finish will be pretty helpful towards getting some extra lives. With that thug's car sent off to the junkyard, we can make our way to stage 3, the west side, and you'll notice that the difficulty has ramped up once again. Does that basic enemy, Doug the Thug, is he wearing the deal with it sunglasses? Yeah, he's certainly going to have to deal with it when we slam him into the pavement. Over here, we're going to have to fight Andor Jr. and full-size Andor at the same time. I recommend taking care of Andor Jr. first. He deals less damage, but he's also easier to kill. You'll want to be able to fight those guys by picking them up, and you'll pick them up by getting slightly above or slightly below them and start mashing that grab button as you move towards them. If you get Andor or Andor Jr. off the screen, you should be able to finish them by just rapidly punching in their general direction, and they should walk right into it. Of course, punching them off screen will work here in stage 3, but it might not be as good later on in the game. Over here in the bar area, we'll fight a lot of low-level enemies, but also some Elgatos. And the Elgatos always bring knives, and they are pretty nasty. Yeah, those guys are mean, so make sure to prioritize them when you see them. They're a little bit harder to grab than the Hollywoods, so you may want to try punches on them, or just get right above or right below them and move into them as you grab like you would with an Andor. Over here, we're gonna fight some more big guys. Watch out for their charge attacks. Other than the charge attacks, 
all they do is kind of a weak kick, so as long as you can avoid them whenever they first come onto the screen, and then watch for future charge attacks, you shouldn't actually have too many problems with those big guys. Keep all the enemies over on the right side of the screen, especially Andor Jr., and if enemies come from the left, try to pick them up and throw them into Andor Jr. Because he has less health than a full-size Andor, throwing enemies into him can be a very effective way of fighting him. Now in here, we need to deal with two full-size Andors, and the best way to do this is to quickly grab the one on the right and throw him into the Andor on the left, and then immediately grab the pipe when you have that split second where they're both down on the map. With the two Andors on the left, you can just keep mashing the attack button and they'll walk right into the pipe. This will also work with Cody. Pretty weird cage match here with only a half-finished cage in the front though. Once those Andors are defeated, we'll be teleported to the final part of the stage. And there's only a few more enemies to defeat here, and there's usually food in that barrel. But we have a lot of health for the moment, so let's deal with these big enemies before we worry about opening that barrel. If you're having trouble opening the barrels, by the way, you may just want to try doing a jump kick on them. So if you're struggling with opening them up, use a jump kick, and you may want to wait to eat that food until you've dealt with a lot of these enemies. We want to conserve our health because it's pretty close to boss fight time. As we make our way over to the right, we'll notice that the Mad Gear Gang has enlisted some high-level Juggalos to fight us, Violent J and Shaggy 2P. We fought these enemies earlier in the game, but now they have much bigger health bars, and one thing that you never want to happen is to get stuck between a J and a 2P or two of those 2Ps, because they will just pummel you into submission. So whenever you see those guys, you want to move up or down on the screen and try to grab them, or try to just punch them with a group of other enemies so that they go down along with them. The upper right corner is a good place to finish off the last of the enemies, and over here we'll face the third boss, Edie E, or just Eddie. This guy's a corrupt cop, so don't feel too bad about pummeling him. You can see that if he hits you, he deals just a ton of damage, so the best way to fight this guy is to get above or below him and then move down towards him while mashing the grab button and you should be able to get him in a grab. Whenever he's down to his last bit of health, he'll get out his gun, but you should still be able to get him in the grabs. At the very beginning of the fight, he spits out a gum item and usually gum restores just a small amount of health, but his ABC gum actually can restore a ton of health. But you want to be careful not to get killed whenever you're picking it up. So he's actually very low on health, I'm just going to finish him here. But keep in mind that that little white thing in the upper right corner, that could be a good item to pick up if you're very low and you need a refill. This guy seems a bit harder to grab as Cody. So what you want to do is you want to start rapidly punching while you're directly above or below this guy so that he has to walk up or down into the line of fire. You don't want to just walk horizontally right at him, he will hit you with his club so fast. Instead, make sure that he's walking to you, and whenever he gets low on health, he gets pretty hard to hit with Cody, so you want to focus on using your jump attacks, or just use your super if you have enough health left. The super is a very good way to hit this guy without him being able to hit you back. So we'll just get kind of close to him. You don't even have to be that accurate if you're going to use the super. And let loose a nice big spin kick to finish him off. And that will take us to round four. The bay area is much longer than the previous rounds have been, and that's significant because in this game, if you run out of lives and have to use a continue, you go all the way back to the beginning of the current round, even if you are fighting the boss. So be aware of that as you move forward here, and prioritize the 2P enemies over the more standard bread. Good old bread. That guy was named after the famous sticks from the Olive Garden. There's some more basic enemies over here. Try to hit them while they're still sitting down and tell Richard Simmons that we're not interested in sweating to the oldies. Once these guys are finished off, another wave of basics will come in, so just punch them as a group. Jake is the most powerful of the low-level thugs. 
Sometimes that guy even has a double life bar. Just having a bigger life bar doesn't make those jakes that much more dangerous. And as you head over here to the right, be ready to avoid the charge attacks from some big guys. And then we're just going to pick them up and start slamming them into each other. After you grab an enemy, you can do two hits on them before you throw them. But these enemies are going to try to charge you while you're picking up their friends. So it may be better to just grab them and try to quickly suplex them into the other bad guys. At this point in the game, the enemies are going to get a good bit more aggressive, so we don't want to be as flashy. Just keep trying to do your grabs and use the enemies as a weapon. It's one of the best things you can do. Pick these guys up and throw them around like medicine balls. So we'll just toss Wong Hu into Bill Bull. And there are a good number of bad guys here, so get ready to mow through all of them. As we head over to the right, we may find some barrels pretty soon that could contain some food for us, so we just need to survive a little bit longer. Try to punch that guy while he's off screen and say goodbye to that barking dog in the background. Here's a barbecue. It's not always a barbecue, but one thing that you do need to be careful of is that you don't move past the barrels here. We want to take out Andor over here on the left side of the screen. If we walk too far to the right, we're going to spawn an Andor Jr., but it's possible to fight the Andor all by himself if you don't advance the screen too much. If you find a sword or a lead pipe, those are lucky finds. You can just kind of let the Andors walk into you like we did in the cage match. If you don't have them, you're going to want to focus on doing throws against those guys. Make your way over here to the right and get all the way to the top of the screen. These barrels will come rolling onto the screen, and if you're all the way at the top, they won't be able to hit you. It actually slows the game down when the barrels come on screen, so sometimes they can be hard to avoid. But if you're all the way at the top, they won't be able to touch you, and you may even be able to break open the top one to find an item. There's only two sets of barrels here, so once you see the second set, you can move back down onto the regular part of the screen. But for that small section, stay all the way at the top. We're going to have to face a lot of these punk type enemies. And one thing that you need to be careful with about these guys is if you don't have a sword, they often will do cartwheels when you try to punch them with your basic attacks. So you're much better off trying to grab them and throw them. Sometimes you can get them in a three hit combo, it's possible. But grabs are going to be way more effective against these guys, and if you ever get surrounded, don't be afraid to use your super spin move. That will get them off of you. As we head over here to the right, the fight continues in the ladies' room. Although this one doesn't have a door on either the left or the right side of it, which is kind of a strange design, but I guess that's just how they build them here in Metro City. Here in the bathroom, be careful that you keep the 2P and J enemies on the same side of the screen. Remember, one of the worst things you can do is to get stuck between two of those enemies. They will pummel you until you likely run out of health. If you do get stuck between two of them, try using your super spin move. That may be one of the only ways to get out of it. Still, the best thing is to avoid that situation entirely. These obnoxious slash enemies will try to block you if you do basic attacks on them, and if you persist with the basic attacks, eventually they'll stop blocking. But you're way better off just slamming them into each other. And here comes some more of those J's. Slam one of those J's right into Silent Bob, and then finish off the other with a few punches. And we'll make our way over here to the right, where we can find a few guys just hanging out in the bathroom. So pummel them while they're still sitting, and hopefully underneath these tires you might find something good. There's a barbecue, that is quite a good find. And it looks like after taking a few punches from a 2P, we are definitely going to need it. That little hat is just worth points, but feel free to grab it. And just keep making your way to the right. Dugs and breads are very easy to fight using your basic attacks. And one thing that's good about those low-level thugs is if you can push them together with some of the more dangerous enemies, you can start punching them and you'll be able to get all of those enemies at the same time. 
There's a few more basics as you make your way to the right, but the enemies are going to start to get harder right about now. These Hollywoods that you see are pretty easy to kill, but they bring firebombs. If you slam them right away, they won't throw the firebombs. A bunch of Sids and Billies will start cartwheeling onto the screen here. Let them know that it's not a great day for a white wedding, and just keep trying to get them with your grab moves. You can see that trying to punch them will just make them do their cartwheels, and your punches can go right through those cartwheels. And that's just not the best way to fight those guys. So get up above them or a little bit below, and just start mashing the X button as you move towards them, and you'll be able to easily get them in a grab. You can see if you punch these red Hollywoods, they still drop the firebomb, and that could be dangerous if you get hit by the flames that radiate out from the firebomb, you'll take a good bit of damage. So be careful whenever you see those guys pop up. As we make our way down the final stretch of round 4, be aware that the boss of this area is quite possibly the most difficult one in the game, so you're going to want to have a lot of health to be able to use your super move against him. Another wave of Hollywoods attacks here, and they're a harbinger of what's about to come. It's about time to fight a whole lot of stabbers. These Hollywoods you want to quickly grab and start throwing them into each other. You don't want to give them a chance to get behind you and throw a knife into your back. The Elgados are a little bit harder to slam, but they are easier to hit with your basic attacks. So if you can kind of catch them in a group, you may be able to punch a bunch of Elgados and Hollywoods at the same time. If you have a chance, you can grab a knife and throw it at these guys, but you mostly want to try to pick up the enemies and just throw them into each other, or group them together and punch them as a group with a bunch of Elgados. There are so many knives on the ground that it's hard to not accidentally pick them up. But you do need to watch out, those Elgados come flying in off the screen sometimes, and they will catch you picking up a knife and hit you. So only pick up a knife when it seems like the coast is clear, and then throw it into the nearest enemy right away. Obviously if you're playing as Cody here, you'll want to pick up those knives right away because Cody is very good with a knife. As you head over here to the right, there's a few more barrels. This one has a barbecue in it, so that's good. The other ones seem to have been empty. You can get lucky and find a weapon in there a lot of the time, and it's nice if you can bring a good sword or a lead pipe into the next boss fight. A few basic thugs are in your way between here and the boss, but watch out for that J. You don't want them to get behind you and start punching, and yeah, that's what we wanted to avoid. There's a 2P on this side. He has a bit less health than Jay, but you can see he tried to get around behind us so that we can get caught in a crossfire between him and the J. So these enemies are going to work together and start coordinating their attacks. We need to be smart against them and just keep slamming them into each other and keeping them all on the same side. Here's a Jake with a double health bar. Shouldn't be anything to really worry about though. You can see it doesn't take too much to finish him off. A few drop kicks will finish this last Jake or we can just hit him with a few punches. It seems like the enemies in this area are never ending, but at least these are easier ones than those stabby guys that we were just fighting. So we're just going to be fighting mostly basic enemies here with a couple J's and 2 P's peppered in. So just keep your wits about you, we are very close to the boss, and whenever you see the Statue of Liberty, that's going to let you know that the boss is going to be coming up very, very soon. There will be another set of barrels before the boss. Take out Guns and Roses here, and move on to the right. Here's those last couple cans. The last can often has some health in it, and you can leave that on the screen for a while so we can deal with the enemies, and we can eat that at our leisure. Just don't wait too long and lose a life. You don't want to be scraping by on a sliver of health and then die because you didn't collect the barbecue in time. So if you're down below three quarters health, then I would recommend just eating it right away. We're going to walk it off the screen here, so we'll eat it. And here is Abigail. And with a name like Abigail, you know this guy has got to be tough. So this guy is tough. If he turns red, you can do a jump kick on him and that will disrupt him. But if he charges at you and isn't red, 
It's very difficult to disrupt that move without doing your super spin attack. So if you see him turn red, get ready to do a jump kick, and that's a good way to conserve some health. You want to deal with the enemies that come into the screen too. There usually aren't very many on the screen at the same time as Abigail, but you don't want to start getting beat up by a 2P while you're fighting this boss, so deal with them as soon as you can. And like I said before, if you see him turn red, that means to do a jump attack. If you see him charge at you without turning red, you're gonna need to do that super spin move. You can do the super spin move even if you only have a tiny sliver of health left, but if you have zero health remaining on your bar, you won't be able to do it. And you can see that sometimes you can catch him in a nice little loop here, where you can do a jump kick on him, then move down to the bottom of the screen and do a jump kick again, but just watch out for that charge attack. You'll need to use that super spin to get yourself out of that but we're going to try to get him stuck in this loop. So just stay on the right, move up and down after you hit him. That'll make him go a little bit farther from where he started. And if you have enough health, you can just keep using your super spin at the end here, especially when he's down to his yellow life bar. This guy has a lot of levels of life bar. He starts with a white one. So yeah, you're going to need to chip him down from quite a bit of health. Jump kicks are your best friend trying to slam this guy is tough, and if you do get picked up by him, expect that you're probably going to lose a life. As Cody, I think this guy is usually a little bit easier because jump kicks are so good on Abigail, and Cody is just great at jump kicks. You're going to use a similar strategy to the one that we used as Hagger. If you see him turn red, get ready to do the jump kick. Cody was able to bring a sword with him this time, so that's pretty useful. If you can bring a sword or a lead pipe, that'll give you a nice advantage. You can hit the boss from pretty far away, and it'll also make you more effective against the enemies that get added into the battle. That Hollywood might even drop a knife that you can use, and, oh, uh, well, alright. Got me there, if you do get caught by the boss, good chance that you're going to die. It's possible to beat this guy with Cody without getting killed, especially if you can get this strategy going. So this is what I wanted you to see is Cody. If you can get the boss over here on the right side of the screen, you can get him with a grab, then move down to the bottom of the screen, start mashing the grab button so that when he comes towards you, you pick him up again, and then you'll throw him, and if you're at the top of the screen, you move to the bottom. If you're at the bottom of the screen, you move to the top. And it's very possible to get him stuck in that loop, and if you can do that, that is by far the easiest way to beat Abigail. Here's another bonus stage, and this one's a little bit harder than the break the car thing. You need to destroy all of these panels of glass. The best way i found to destroy them is to use your jump kicks, although some of them it seems like you'll bounce off if you don't hit them in just the right spot. So you may need to do a little bit of practice on this one to get it perfect. Just barely did at that time. Also, make sure to keep attacking when the time says zero. You have a little bit of a grace period at the very end. That one is a bit easier to do as Cody in my opinion, but it's nice if you can get those perfect points and put them towards another extra life. We started at the bottom, now we're here. In Uptown, whenever those barrels come rolling in, being all the way at the top of the screen isn't going to work for that first set, so you're gonna have to jump over them, or even better, do a jump attack so that you can break one open and try to get some items. Just be ready for them to appear. If you don't react quickly enough, some slowdown on the screen could make it so that you won't be able to get away from them. If you thought round four was long, round five is even longer, and there are just so many enemies that we need to kill here. Many of them are the high level type, like Andors, a bunch of the stabbing type guys, lots of those cartwheeling punks. But here at the beginning, it's mostly just your basic dudes, Doug the Thug, Gene Simmons, and Jake. So take your time taking these guys out, and if any of those barrels drop some food, you may want to leave that food on the screen until the last minute before you have to pick it up. As long as you don't walk it off the screen, you will be able to get it. But remember, you can never move back to the left in this game. Anything that's left on the screen to the left is essentially gone. 
So we picked up that hamburger, and over here, there's a chandelier, and that chandelier is sort of a trap, but it also probably contains food for us, so it's a good kind of trap. When you're ready to spring the trap, you just want to walk right near that shadow, but don't linger around there because it'll fall down and deal you a bunch of damage. If it falls on one of the enemies, it'll hit them for a lot of damage, so if you can time it up right, you can actually get some double effort out of those chandeliers. Over here, some bill bulls will come charging in, keep all the enemies on the left side of the screen, and either slam them or use your jump kicks to deal with them. Whenever we defeat the last few enemies here, the screen will fade out and we'll be teleported to the next area. In the original arcade release, there were some nice transitions between the different parts of the rounds, but most of that stuff was cut for the Super Nintendo version. So just keep these enemies on the left, and here's a full-size Andor. Watch out for him. Keep him over there on the left, maybe put a knife in him if you want to. In this part of the game, you don't want to just start punching at Andors that are off the screen. Sometimes they'll charge in and hit you, so it's better to try to keep them on the screen and just keep slamming them around. Considering that Andor was the only enemy left, it was an okay time to try to get a couple hits in after you grab them as well. And here is that outside area. You want to start out at the bottom of the screen here, but as soon as you see the first enemy start charging at you, move up to the top of the screen to avoid him, and then pick up the nearest enemy and start slamming. In this part of the game, you don't usually have time to get in a few extra hits after you grab the enemies. One of the other enemies might charge into you or kick you while you're doing that. So what you want to do instead, just grab the nearest enemy and immediately throw them into the nearest other enemy, trying to group everyone on the same side of the screen. So you can press a direction so that you throw them in that direction. If you press to the left, you'll suplex them to the left. If you press to the right, you'll suplex to the right and you're going to be using those directions to put the enemies in the position that you want them in. So most of the enemies are on the right side of the screen here. That's why we're slamming these enemies to the right. In the background, you can see some large red balls. Are we in front of a target? We have to fight the combination of an Andor and an Andor Jr. over here. The Andor Jr. is the one that you want to get rid of first because he's a lot easier to kill. And there's going to be some 2Ps and Js that come on to mix it up with these guys. If you can grab them, try to throw them into the Andors. That's a good way to get some extra damage on them. Once Andor Jr. is out of the way, we can focus on the Andor. Just keep slamming this guy, and if he's the last enemy left on the screen, feel free to get in those extra hits after you pick him up. Two J's are over here, and then that 2P comes in from the left side, so they'll try to get you stuck in the crossfire. That's what these guys do. If you have to, don't be afraid to use your super spin attack here. That's a good way to get out of that crossfire. Even more of them will keep attacking now. Use your slams to keep them on the same side of the screen, although they will do their best to get you between them. You may have noticed that the two peas in this area have a lot more health than they did before. Two waves of the Red Hollywoods attack here. Remember, if you quickly slam them, they won't drop their firebombs, but if you punch them, those firebombs are getting dropped, so make sure to get out of the way by moving up or down vertically so that you're not in the path of the flames. A few more basic enemies will get in your way over here. We're almost to the end of this outdoor section, so keep working your way over here to the right. There's another wave of red Hollywoods that arrive whenever you see that big marble pillar, and that also marks the end of the outdoor section. There's sort of a narrow bottleneck there between the pillars, so you can use that to your advantage. The enemies will have to move up or down to get at you there, but watch out for the axles that spawn from the right side. Remember that the best way to deal with axles is to throw them because they will try to block your basic attacks. And there's only one left here, so one more throw ought to finish him off. And then we'll bust on into the final building. It's pretty convenient that Metro City is laid out in such a way that we can go through this entire adventure and always be moving from left to right. It's like it was designed by the same architects that made the Mushroom Kingdom. 
When you first get inside here, if you're very low on health, you may need to rush to the chandelier and spring that trap so that it will hopefully drop a nice barbecue for you to eat. And then you can resume picking up the enemies and tossing them into each other. We don't have a whole lot more ground to cover to get to the end of the game, but because of just the gross number of enemies that we have to fight here, and the fact that every enemy that we fight has a much bigger health bar than they would have earlier in the game, getting through this section can take quite a bit of time. So just remember which enemies are the more dangerous types. The 2Ps and the Js are pretty fast, so you'll want to prioritize them when you see them. And enemies like Doug, Simmons... Those guys are just not that big of a deal. More big guys attack us here, so it's time to show them what Hulkamania is all about. These guys are wearing suspenders, but they're wearing two suspenders, and Hagger knows that the best way to fight is to only have the one suspender going, otherwise two would just cramp your style. There's another chandelier here. Curry is not as good as a barbecue, but it's still pretty decent, so we're happy for any good food items that we can find. A nice sword in here to help us deal with these basic enemies, and ah, uh, two swords. Well, now we have a backup if we need it. If you do find a decent weapon here, you can mostly just hang out in the middle of the screen and let the enemies come to you as you cut them down. These low-level thugs don't do jump attacks or anything that's very disruptive, so yeah, they'll just keep walking into your sword or lead pipe or whatever you might have at this point in the game, and if you don't have a good weapon, well, it's not that hard to just pick them up and slam them into each other. Once again, the barrels will come through, and once again, staying at the top of the screen is not going to help you there. However, we will be seeing another set of barrels coming up shortly, and that set of barrels is one that you can dodge by being at the top of the screen, so the rolls are not super consistent there. Here's another Andor Jr. Andor combination. You're gonna see a lot of that. Andor was modeled after Andre the Giant, and yeah, he does look a lot like him. So as usual, try to slam other enemies into the Andors, deal with the Andor Jr. first because he's easier to get rid of, and if you can get it down so that there's only an Andor left on the screen, he's pretty easy to finish off with your best slam attacks. Right here, if you stand in front of that hallway, you can go all the way to the top of the screen and you won't get hit by those barrels. And it's nice to be able to avoid the barrels without jumping over them again. Some more of these big guys attack here. It is possible to disrupt their charge with a jump attack, so if you want to do that, go ahead, but you don't usually have to. It's usually easier to just get out of the way of their charge and then grab them while they're facing the wrong direction. Gonna grab this guy and send him right into those guys, although we missed with the first shot, we definitely got him with the second. As these other enemies get back up, we'll quickly take them out. And then we'll try to grab Axel here and throw him into Simmons. Looking at the wallpaper in this place lets me know that this Belger guy, his taste is in his mouth. He's also the only rich dude I know that just has random oil drums lying around his mansion. Yeah, I don't know what that's all about. Maybe they're filled with dip in case Roger Rabbit shows up. As we walk the red carpet, slam these Hollywoods into the Elgados, and we're going to be coming to a barrel that almost always has a good food item into it, so if you're running low on health, this could be something good right up here. And yeah, we got a barbecue this time, so perfect. Make sure to eat that barbecue, we need it right now. Don't get caught by an enemy though when you're trying to pick up an item. That is the worst keep all these guys over on the same side. We'll just punch Jake a couple times to soften him up and then, you know, pick him up and toss him over to the right. There's only a few more enemies we have to deal with here before we get to a wall. And once we get to that wall, this is the last bit in this area before we go on to the final stretch. With this big wall over here, almost all of the enemies are going to be spawning from the left. Although occasionally somebody will drop out of the sky on the right side, so you do need to be aware of that. There comes an Elgato, who just comes flying out of the ceiling. I'm not sure how that happened, but I mean, he's some kind of knife ninja, so I guess that it's possible. 
as you're battling the enemies that are near the door here, be aware that there will be a wave of red Hollywoods that come in here. Here they are right now. And you can try to slam them to avoid their firebombs, but if you set it up right, a lot of times the firebombs will hit the enemies that start spawning as soon as you finish those guys off. So you can see we got one of those Elgados with the flames that time, and he took quite a bit of damage from that. This should be the last few enemies that we have to fight before we bust through the wall. There's a lot of knives on the ground here, but these enemies are very fast, so only take the time to pick up a knife whenever you have a clear opening. This Hollywood should be the last enemy that we have to fight, and only a few more slams should finish him off. Alright, time for the final section. The music in this area reminds me a lot of the music that plays during the continue countdown in Street Fighter 2. You'll see some barrels at the beginning, hopefully they'll have some food for you. Maybe a nice weapon if there's no food, but hopefully not just an empty barrel or some item worth a few points. The final boss awaits us at the end of this purple section, but before we get to him, we're going to need to face a crack team of the most difficult basic enemies in the game. Everybody has the most health they possibly can, and so you're going to need to be dealing with billies that have multiple life bars. They start out with a green bar instead of a yellow one, J's that have completely full health, two P's that have as much health as J's had in the previous stage. So you're going to have to be careful here and try to conserve your health. Eventually we will get to another chandelier that will have a barbecue in it for us, but that's not going to be coming up for quite some time now. So do your best to take out this Andor Jr. and don't move too far to the right before you beat him, or you're going to summon the regular Andor. And of course it's much better if you can fight the Andor Jr. before the Andor arrives. When some of these big guys charge in, you know that that's a good opportunity to slam them into the remaining Andor. And Sids and Jays, they're good to slam into Andors too, or just kind of line up the J in front of Andor so you can punch them as a group. This Billy has a green health bar again, meaning that he's going to take several slams to kill. But don't hold on to Billies for too long unless they're the last enemy on the screen. Try to grab this punk. There we go. Take him out. And we're just going to keep moving to the right. Now when you see this chandelier, that means we are very close to the boss. Don't eat that barbecue until you certainly need it, but we have to fight more Andor and Andor Jr. type enemies here, so if you need to eat that barbecue, do it quick. Oh man, that guy almost got me, but was able to do the super spin attack before he landed on us. So that's something that Andors will do. If you get knocked down, they'll jump up into the air and try to land on you, and if you don't get up in time and do something like a super spin move, you will get hit again and likely die. Of course, we're so close to the end here that if you have a few lives, we may be able to spare one or two, but the final boss can be difficult, so your best bet is to try to make it to Belger with at least two or three lives available. That should give you a nice comfortable cushion that will make it very possible to finish the game. With just Andor left, we can take our time as we slam him and get a couple extra hits in after picking him up. And once he goes down, we can head over here to the right, where it's time to fight Belger. Belger comes in in this weird power chair thing. In the original version, he was in a wheelchair, but the North American localization team must have thought that was distasteful. Even though the wheelchair was clearly a trick, Belger is fully able. If you put too much space between you and Belger, he will definitely shoot you with his arrow gun, and he's never going to drop that thing no matter how many times you slam him around. So you just want to stay very close to this guy, and as soon as he gets up, you want to try to pick him up again. So stay near him, move a little bit up or a little bit down of Belger, and then yeah, as soon as you see him start to get up, you can either grab him, or when he's low on health, you may want to use your super spin attack, which is even better than the grab. Nothing seems to disrupt that. Even if he shoots the arrows at you, you may be able to block them with the super spin attack. With Cody, it feels a little bit harder to grab this guy, but grabs are still a good thing to try against them. One thing that may actually work though against this boss 
is if you can get him over onto the right side of the screen and just keep rapid fire punching at him, you can sort of pin him in such a position that he'll just keep jumping up in the air and you'll be able to hit him every so often for a small amount of damage. As you're doing this, we're not getting a ton of damage on the boss and the enemies are still spawning from the left side, so if we give the boss a chance to breathe, he's probably going to shoot his arrows upward and then we're going to have to move out of the way and that could disrupt the whole thing. However, if we're in a pretty good spot, he'll keep jumping and shooting the arrows over our head, and then some of those enemies that spawn from the left side might even get hit by the arrows and take significant damage. There's a limit to how many extra enemies can pop in during this fight, and Andor is one of the last ones. Once Andor is gone, and you can see that the arrows are very good at taking out Andor since he's such a big target. We're not getting a whole lot of damage on Belger, but you can see that his bar has gone down to a light purple color, and it was white before, so we are getting some damage through. There's one more enemy I think that will come in here, a Billy. And once this Billy is gone, it's just going to be one-on-one, -on -one, Cody versus Belger, and that's going to make it a lot easier to deal with this guy. The Billy is actually kind of annoying. Whenever he gets close, you may want to do one of your super spin kicks. That will help you get Billy into position where you can finish him off with some punches without disrupting what you were doing with Belger. Once all the extra enemies are gone, we can get more aggressive with the boss. Try to do some jump kicks. The down and Y jump kick that makes the knee attack is pretty good against Belger. And you should be able to get him with some throws like you could with Hagger, but you want to throw him immediately after you pick up Belger. You're not going to be able to hold him for very long. Try to position yourself slightly above or slightly below the boss if you want to try to hit him with your punch combos. That often works, and if you're punching in the right spot, even if he shoots the arrows right at you, Cody's punches can block them. You do want to watch out for those upward punches, unless you happen to be doing an uppercut at the right time, those will probably hit you if you're in the wrong spot. It is possible to beat this guy without dying as Cody, but it's a lot harder in my opinion to be able to finish the game deathless with Cody than it is with Hacker. So while I'm able to do it pretty consistent with Hacker, Cody is a little bit more random. And that's it. We've done it. We've beaten Final Fight. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Oof. Well, I guess that's the end of that guy. Regardless of which character you finish the game with, you're going to see the same ending, so even if you beat the game with Cody, you'll still see this scene where Hagger is reunited with his daughter, and then he says this bit, I thought I'd lost you like I lost your mother. Yeah, I must have missed that part of the backstory. Was she murdered by the Mad Gear gang? Is that why he's so tough on organized crime? Hmm. Things are starting to make sense now. As the final credits roll, we see Cody walking along to the left, something that we did very little of in this game. I have to say that although this game is pretty basic, it's still a lot of fun to play. Of course, the Streets of Rage series would go on to improve upon the formula that was established here, and that game improved upon this by adding fighting moves into the mix like the ones that we saw in Street Fighter 2. So that just makes me wonder, if this game had remained a Street Fighter sequel, would it have been a lot more like Streets of Rage? That's something we'll probably never know. As Cody walks through Uptown, Jessica calls to him. She wants to know where he's going and how he can just walk away. But Cody understands that as long as evil stalks the streets, his loved ones will always be in jeopardy. With great power comes great responsibility. So although he wants to stay here with Jessica, for now, there's nothing he can do. Jessica is certainly not happy about it, but she understands, and she leans in to give Cody one last kiss as the game fades to black.
Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Final Fight and return order to the lawless Metro City. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos because there will always be more crime syndicates trying to intimidate political figures. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.